So I'm Konstantin Rado. I'm a PhD student at Coventry University based in uh, CIALPS, the Center for Advanced Low Carbon Proportional Systems. And today I'm going to talk about an uh, improved silicon, carb silicon carbide MOSFET model, um, focusing on internal strain inductance and body diode charge for better switching transients. So I'm going to take you through uh, some background to, to introduce you to this topic, and then I will present the manufacturer uh, <coughs> physical-based model, and together we are going to answer this question. Is the manufacturer standards model good enough to be used directly in our uh, simulation systems and then uh, perform the transition, the, the, the transients and the uh, um, analysis? Then I'm going to present uh, the simulation and experiments and uh, the validation I've uh, done in order to answer this question. And finally, we'll conclude this presentation. So let's look at the big picture, uh, uh, how uh, the, the process to, to the final product. So we can see two big uh, stages. One of it is the design stage where the concept and simulation uh, is uh, located. And the second one is the prototyping and validation stage. So in this case, we are concentrating on the simulation because if we can create an accurate model, well, an optimized model as, uh, as accurate as possible to the prototype, then we can predict the problems from the simulation stage and then save prototyping, save time spent and res resources spent on validation. So let's look at the device we are talking about. So what is so special about silicon carbide MOSFET? Uh, this device <coughs> has capabilities to um, operate at high voltage, uh, higher switching speeds, and uh, higher temperature compared to the silicon devices, traditional silicon devices. And it makes it, um, uh, it, it makes it more efficient and uh, increase the uh, power density. So why MOSFET, uh, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor? Why this transistor? This transistor, it has a capability. It has an, an internal body diode, straight, uh, parasitic body diode, but this body diode, we can use it to free will the, the current. So we don't need an additional uh, body diode, an additional diode. So we can save money from this. However, we have problems we, can, we need to take care of uh, later on. So those are the body, the, this is the, the body diode I'm talking about. And another problem comes from uh, his capability, its capability to, to switch fast. So because of this, uh, uh, because of the inductance of the packaging, internal uh, packaging, wi uh, uh, wire bonds and uh, uh, leads, additional problems comes from, uh, uh, from these uh, inductances. So where these MOSFETs are used in the, our cars, electrical cars, are used in the power converting stages and especially we are concentrated on the inverter uh, power conversion where uh, the direct current is, uh, translate, is converted to uh, alternating current. Okay, but what is the problem with this? Because of the internal inductances we, we talked earlier and the inductance uh, present in uh, um, PCB layout, PCB traces, uh, <clears throat> overshoots and also sustained oscillation is uh, prone to, to, to happen. And this then translate later on in uh, electromagnetic interference, which then will interfere with our electric vehicles, onboard computers and devices, and can, can create uh, problems. So how to solve this problem? The luckily, the manufacturer in this case, Allspeed provides us with um, a model. So in this case, I took the SPICE model and then uh, design, uh, draw an uh, electric circuit to understand 
this, the, the model provided by the manufacturer, and then uh, uh, then uh, ask myself if, if it's good enough. So the manufacturer is including the two capacitances, which are the, the variable capacitances, the gate to, so gate to drain and drain to source, and also a constant capacitance, which is uh, the gate to source. Also, the channel current is uh, represented in that case as G2, and then the body diode as well is included in the model. And finally, the internal strain duct, as we are talking about, is given as well by uh, the manufacturer. So is this model good enough? The designer is uh, asking himself and then uh, starts to validate the, the, the model with the data sheet first. And in our case, in the transfer characteristic, output characteristic, and capacitance characteristic, the, uh, uh, the transients uh, looks good. So they, they, uh, the, the manufacturer, the model, it should be good enough to provide, uh, to provide us with the, the, the real behavior. However, is this enough? The question is again. So in order to answer this question, I prepared some simulation first in uh, a software called LT Spice, where a double pulse test has been uh, prepared to uh, simulate the uh, uh, transients, switching transients. And on the other hand, in ANSI SKU 3D, uh, a 3D model has been prepared for a half bridge converter and also for a standard three pin packaging. So by uh, <clears throat> extracting the inductance from the uh, gate loops, then I could introduce them in the SPICE model, and also the power loop inductance has been introduced as well in the uh, model to have a uh, more accurate, uh, more uh, near to, to reality to, to the, our, my prototype model. So then the question, why should I uh, uh, simulate why should I measure again the standard three, three pin packaging once the manufacturer gives us the values as you see in the simulation A is the original manufacturer model where it gives us typical values but the manufacturer only know uh, what distance we are going to uh, solder our uh, devices on our PCBs so the inductance it will vary. So in my case as you see uh, the LS, which is uh, known as uh, common source inductance, it has a difference of 0.3 nanohairy. You'll say that this is so small, so it don't matter much. However, it matters in this case because the common source inductance influences so much the, the, the transients, the switching transients. So next step was to uh, prepare a double pulse test and then uh, validate. So the double pulse test has been prepared and a 300 volt direct current has been uh, fed it into the bank capacitor and another 12 volt direct current into the gate driver along with the signal, uh, uh, control signal from the signal generator. So these data then were collected and processed in our, uh, in, in MATLAB. So as you can see, the simulation A which is the original manufacturer model, it has a significant difference compared with the red, the experiment, the red result. And in order to understand this, then I extracted the inductance in the overshoot. This is a representation of the overshoot in the current. Again, to compare the, the charge with the data sheet and led me to, to an understanding that the, the extra charge comes from the body diode of the upper device in, uh, in my half bridge converter. So by studying the body diode of the upper device, then I understood that by reducing this TA, which is the time taken by the body diode to store energy, so in modeling the time to store energy, I can reduce the charge from uh, uh, from my uh, current overshoot <clears throat> and the model, the manufacturer model, it has actually one parameter called transit time 
which is related with the uh, uh, diffusion capacitors, which it has been uh, uh, set as 25 nanoseconds originally. But by reducing it to, to 7.15 nanoseconds at 25 degrees Celsius, I could reduce the, sim the charge from the simulation A, as you can see the black curve, to the blue curve, which is predicting and reduce the error by almost 90%. And also the overall transient behavior in terms of DIDT, DVDT, and most <clears throat> more obvious in, uh, in the uh, current overshoot has been improved. And also in the gate source voltage has been improved by 90%. So to conclude this work, by applying this approach, we can calibrate the standard, manufacturer standard model to optimize our, the results to our needs, to our uh, design. So by predicting this transit type value <clears throat> well, we can reduce the error by 90%, which then will lead to fewer uh, failures and uh, less uh, over-engineering. So finally, I want to thank Coventry University and the FEV for sponsoring my PhD, and thank you all for having me here. Thank you.